it's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, what if you built a billion story building? Well, that would be taller than any nuclear power plant in the solar system, including the sun. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer with a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering operations to emergency response. I don't claim to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some knowledge. Let's see what this is. This question came from Kira, who at age four and a half wanted to build a billion story building. Oh, Actually, it came from Kira's dad, who wanted to help Kira appreciate how big and difficult such a project would be. Kira, if you make a building too tall, the top part is heavy and it squishes the bottom part. Until you make it really tall, and then the top part will tear itself off, off and go into orbit near the moon. <laughs> but we're yeah, that's true. Uh, you're dealing with the square cube law, because when you double the height, the weight increases by a factor of eight, but its cross-sectional strength would only increase by a factor of four. So yeah, you're going to run into some material strength limits pretty quick. Plus he added, once you get to a certain point, you're dealing with the competing forces of gravity versus um, centrifugal force. Getting ahead of ourselves. Have you ever tried to make a tower out of jello? It's easy to make a little tiny wobbly jello castle. In fact, some people like to serve fancy jello that way. But if you try to make a really big jello castle, the whole thing smushes down on itself. It's the same thing happens with buildings jello. eventually. The buildings we make are strong. The tallest are almost a kilometer tall, and we could probably make buildings two or even three kilometers tall if we wanted, and they would still be able to stand up under their own weight. But too much higher, and we'd run into the jello problem. The top part would squish the bottom part. Yeah, when you get to billions, or even way before that, of floors, concrete, steel, even titanium, or more exotic stuff like carbon nanotubes or graphene still have their limits. This would definitely involve the use of some sort of magic. Maybe some mega structure building technology like they have in Star Wars. There are other problems with tall buildings, too. One is wind. That's the wind true. up high is very strong, and buildings have to be very strong to stand up against the wind. Another problem is, surprisingly, elevators. Tall buildings need elevators, uh, since no one wants to climb hundreds of flights of stairs. If your building has lots of floors, you need lots of different elevators to get all the people where they're trying yeah. to go at once. It's gonna Some be of our slow. existing tall buildings have floors purely dedicated to letting people change from one elevator to another. But yeah, for something, again, a billion stories, so I'm going to assume a story is about four meters, that's, or about 13 feet, which is more or less typical high-rise. That's four billion meters, or four million kilometers, which is about three times the diameter of the sun. So even with basically high-speed maglev elevators, it's going to take a very, very long time to reach the top. <laughs> Maybe near relativistic speed maglevs, if that's such a thing. Crazy ultra hyperloop. It'd have to be something like that, because cables would snap under their own weight. If you make a building too tall, the whole thing gets taken up by elevators and there's no space for regular rooms. But that would also be the important first step because you're going to want to build the elevators first to haul all your equipment. I know I've seen at like nuclear power plant constructions, it's basically elevators and giant cranes, the things you put in to haul all your material in and also to move all of your people in and out. And those aren't, those aren't even really that tall. They're just big and bulky and involve a lot of uh, heavy equipment. But here, when you're trying to traverse this much height, yeah, you're going to want your elevator shafts to go in first, just so you can build the thing. Another big problem is money. A building several <laughs> miles tall would cost many billions of dollars. And look uh, ooh, billions of dollars. That would be cheap on the order of billions of dollars. That's like a dollar a floor. <laughs> you're going to be dealing with the equivalent of all the world's resources and then some, because essentially you're making a megastructure. Most people don't think giant towers a few miles tall are important enough to spend billions mm. of dollars on. Even I mean, yeah, building a space elevator could is going to be a lot shorter than this. Even if you found a lot of money, you'd still have problems making a tower a billion stories tall. A billion stories is... I could just imagine all like the cost overruns or having half finished things if you even tried to apply real world or like financing or logistics or something like that to a project like this and people just giving up on the after the many generations it would take to build something like this there's enough sad examples of nuclear power plants that have tried to be built went through years just to get the permitting sorted out only for then somebody else to be in power and decide not to build the thing. 
or even have ones that are partially completed that they just had to, that were just given up on, sad. Just too many. A big skyscraper might have about 100 floors, which means it's as tall as 100 little houses. Yeah. <laughs> if you stacked 100 skyscrapers on each other to make a mega skyscraper, it would reach halfway to space. This skyscraper would still only have 10,000 floors, which is way less than your billion floors. So let's stack 100 mega skyscrapers. Oh, I like the scale of that. Oh yeah, look how small the, uh, the gap between space and air is. To make a mega mega skyscraper. The mega mega skyscraper would stick out so far from Earth that spacecraft would crash into it. Some, like the International Space satellites Station, could steer debris. around it. But space is full of broken satellites and pieces of junk all flying around at random, some of which will eventually smash into your mega mega skyscraper at very high speeds. I'm also just thinking of something this big could even threaten I mean, it wouldn't be shaped like this, obviously, just a big spire, but in order to create the bases or underground supports you would need for something like that, something this massive, when you get to billion, would most certainly press into the Earth's crust, possibly causing some mantle displacement and even threatening tectonic stability. Assuming you could even build something that big in the first place. But let's say you did using mega structure magic, that would be crazy. And anyway, a mega mega skyscraper is only a million floors high. That's still a lot smaller yeah. than the billion that you want. Well, 1%. So let's stack up 100 mega mega skyscrapers to make a mega 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 skyscraper. The mega 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 skyscraper would be so tall, the top of it would just barely Even brush against the moon. Anymore. Yeah. And it would introduce a new problem, centrifugal forces. Just oh, like how just, a swing you carousel throws you outward, that, anything still, spinning yeah. in sync with the Earth's equator is thrown outward. On the surface, objects literally weigh about half a percent less at the Earth's equator than at the poles. The farther out you go, the weaker Earth's gravity gets and the stronger the centrifugal force yeah. is. The effects are equal at just over a tenth of the way to the moon. If you build a skyscraper this tall, you could launch a geostationary satellite just by letting go of it out the window. Window. But our mega awesome. mega mega skyscraper is so much taller than geostationary orbit that most of its mass is where the outward pulling centrifugal force is much moon. much stronger than gravity. Yeah, forget your space elevator, just a straight thing. Are you going to connect it to the moon too? The moon's going to be your counterweight? Oh, that would be a mess. <laughs> Interestingly enough, um, you might be better off trying to build something like this in space from the get-go, though I guess I don't know if that makes the definition of the term skyscraper. You'd basically just have a really long tube in space. But yeah, at this point, such a big percentage of it is in space. And again, we're at 10% of a billion at this point. The engineering challenge of this skyscraper isn't that it'll collapse down on itself like jello, but that it'll tear itself up by the roots and go into orbit near the moon. And it's- If it's something that, I'm just trying to think, something that big with enough could even mess with the Earth's rotation a little bit. Maybe not, by, probably not by much, considering this is the Earth. But if you're going to need to put something in there to stabilize it, maybe. Still wouldn't be a billion stories. To get there, we'd have to stack 10 mega 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 skyscrapers on top of each other to make one Kira skyscraper. At the top... Did he just make a little curly cue in there? <laughs> Some kind of mega Dr. Seuss skyscraper. That's amazing. The Kira skyscraper would be going faster than the speed with which the solar system orbits the Milky Way. And if you timed things right, you could launch a satellite with almost enough velocity to leave our galaxy <laughs> just by letting go of it out your amazing. window. Suffice it to say, the Kira skyscraper would be pretty close to impossible to build. Oh yeah, I mean, at this scale, just pick a Dyson sphere or something like that. That's the amount of resources that you're talking about for doing this. The material failure challenges, the gravity, atmospheric, centrifugal force challenge, the impossible logistics. Yeah, make a mega structure. Uh, extract resources from uh, the asteroid belt, possibly the Kuiper belt. And any loose pieces would fly off and get strewn throughout the galaxy. The other thing is, there's going to be some radiation hazards too. I mean, probably lesser concern compared to some of these other things, but it isn't nothing. Since the majority of this is space, you're going to need it to be well shielded against cosmic radiation. High energy protons, ions, gamma rays, solar wind, coronal mass ejections. So you're going to need some shielding just to add a little bit more weight to this thing. Because at a mere 10 or so kilometers, pilots receive increased radiation dose. Above 100 kilometers, you're going to get even more comparable to that of uh, astronauts. And yeah, so high radiation dose. And there would be significant radon buildup in the lower and underground levels that you're going to want to incorporate in this sort of stuff for support. 
but with enough ventilation systems, that one's possible to mitigate. And obviously, you're going to need some form of nuclear power to support this, whether it be fission, fusion, antimatter. Yeah, I'm throwing some advanced ones in there because even fusion and antimatter reactors look plausible compared to building something like this. Which is another reason why just make it a Dyson sphere because then you can just extract the energy from the sun with a similar level of investment. But if you're in the low to middle levels, the radiation isn't too bad. But the view from the roof would be incredible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was such a good one. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.